right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right, staying strong and solid in these times that we're in. I pray that you have repented and that you are baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he looks out for you, he comforts you. I pray that your mental health gets better and that you become more strong and wise in the Lord. I pray that you stay on that narrow path and I pray that you stop backsliding. And I just pray that you stay faithful and loyal to the Lord and that you take it one day at a time. You obey his voice, you hearken to his ways, and you just be steadfast. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Let us thank the Lord for another day. Let us thank the Lord for food in our belly. Let us thank the Lord for clothes on our back. Let us thank the Lord for a roof over our head. Let us thank the Lord for protecting us coming in and coming out. And let us just give him all the praise on and glory for getting us through the night. Amen. So much people go through so much things all over the world, but we got to take it one day at a time, people. Okay. Many people are going through trials and tribulations and tests and hardships and long suffering and others may be going through a good time right now. Okay. So whatever season you're in, just give God all the praise and glory and always worship through everything you're going through. Always worship, okay? You worship through the good times, the bad times, the ugly times. You worship, amen? Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome, family. Greetings, body of Christ. Shalom, everybody. Thank you all for supporting and listening. I appreciate all of you. I love you all. Praying for you all every day. All right, we got to uplift one another, encourage one another, and always iron sharp as iron. Edification, reproof, correction. And let us also be merry-hearted and joyful as well. Let us have good times, good laughs as well as we're going through the serious battles of life. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome everyone. All tribes, all peoples, all nations, all tongues, all languages, all four corners of the earth, all faces, all races. Whether you are an Israelite or a Gentile, it is all right. Whether you are chosen or adopted, it is all right. Let us gather and praise the Lord. Let us fellowship and let us give him all the praise, honor, and glory forever. Yes, yes, y'all. Let us love the Lord our God, Father, our mind, heart, and soul. Let us love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Let us obey the gospel, obey the law, such a commandments. Let us obey the whole word. And let us also be doers of the word. Let us do Father's business and Father's will for the rest of our lives until Jesus comes back. And let us constantly just keep helping people along the journey, helping people along the way in our path. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. All right, y'all. So today's message, we're going to continue the Bible reading series. All right, last time we finished up the book of Matthew chapters 1 through 5, which are very excellent readings, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to continue from the book of Matthew chapter 6. And from there, we will close out with a prayer. We'll close out with a blessing, a priestly blessing. We'll also close out with giving all the praise, honor, glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise the only begotten Son who died for our sins, amen? So as we start off, before we start off with the book of Matthew chapter 6, we're going to read this Bible reading commentary that's added into this as well. And then we'll go to Matthew chapter 6. Okay, so let us start with this commentary. Tuesday, today's Bible reading, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 34, recommended readings, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 through 10, the book of Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. All right. The title of this commentary is called Long-Term Investments, okay? So here we go. All right, so with these commentaries, um, a lot of times it could kind of mix in a carnal saying or message or lesson mixed with something out of the Bible as well, so don't get too hung up on it. So we'll just go through this commentary, okay? Long-Term Investments. Whether you're Steve Forbes, Donald Trump, or just a guy trading a few stocks online, you must follow the simplest rule of investing. Of investing, don't put your money where it won't make a profit. Think about it. If you hear that a fledging company may soon declare bankruptcy, you don't want its stock. Or if you learn that your city plans to build a sewage treatment plant next to a piece of real estate you've wanted to buy, you'll start looking for land elsewhere. Ignore these matters of common sense and you're bound to make a bad investment. When it comes to bad investments, Jesus urges his followers not to collect treasures on earth because the temporary trinkets. Trinkets of the world don't last. Some break down or rust away. Termites may make lunch out of others, and thieves take anything that remains. Instead, Jesus commands us to seek real profits, not material ones that pad our wallets, but spiritual ones that, that benefit our souls. These heavenly treasures represent an investment opportunity to good, too good to pass up. When Jesus says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will also be, in verse 21, he means that we naturally worship our first love. If we love money and worldly treasures, we offer God no higher than second place in our lives. Why do we work so hard to attain the things of this world? Take some, t take time some weekend to, to stroll through your local city dump. 
You'll see everything from cheap stuffed animals to the most precious family heirloom, heirloom, heirlooms. Jesus reminds us to invest in true profit by giving God first place in our lives. Heaven's treasures won't ever decay, decline, deteriorate, or decompose. Heaven has no city dump. Mm, yes, yes, to take away. Would you describe your most important investments as treasures on earth or treasures in heaven? Why? What kind of profit do your investments return to you? What steps can you take to become more faithful in storing up treasure in heaven rather than here in this world? Mm, quote, unquote. This is a quote from Henry Ward Beecher. Beecher. All right. And the quote is. Heaven will be inherited by every man who has heaven in his soul. In other words. All right. So that's just a quote added in the commentary connected to the parables and the things that Jesus was saying about treasures in heaven. OK. And that's much more important than anything you could get down here. Amen. Everything down here is temporary and is not meant to be kept for the long run anyway. All right. Life is a vapor. Right. But God's word is forever. All right. We have to think about eternal things and the everlasting things. Amen. So now I got through that commentary. Now let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter six, verse one. Giving to the needy. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Mm -hmm. That was a read regarding giving to the needy prayer. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth that they have received their full, their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door. And pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Mm. This then is how you should pray. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men what, the, what they sin against you, hold on, excuse me, but deliver us from the evil one. For your kingdom is the power, the honor, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. So let's continue with the book of Matthew chapter 6 reading. All right, all right. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men for their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Fasting. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting. But only to your father who is unseen and your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Treasures in heaven. Do not store up treasure. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. There your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Mm. No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God. But you cannot serve both God and money. Mammon. Mm can't serve both y'all you can't serve god and money okay do not worry therefore i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them 
Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to his life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor and glory was dressed like one of these. Hmm. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Oof, amen. That is a fact right there. So true. That is the book of Matthew chapter 6 reading. You know, the gospel is so powerful and amazing. The things that Jesus constantly saying to us. Is very simple, potent, and effective. You know, it cuts deep. The word of God is a double-edged sword. It truly is. It does cut deep. Even when it's like a good word or even when it's like, you know, it still cuts deep, you know. And as we read the word, you're also reading yourself as well. You have to ask yourself, am I aligning myself with the things Jesus was saying to live? You know, Jesus talking about not worrying. We live in a very wor worrisome generation. And there's so much going on. Anxiety is something that many people battle with, overthinking, people losing sleep, stressed out over bills, their children, and this and that and the other. But when you trust in the Lord and he give you that perfect peace, um, you trust in the Lord knowing he, gonna, he got it figured out, knowing he has all the answers, all the sources, all the solutions. Um, but that doesn't mean you be lazy about your situation, what you're going through, though. You still have to be diligent even in your need and even in your hunger or whatever you're lacking. You still have to be working towards bettering yourself. But you have to trust in the Lord and put it in his hands and let his will be done. All right. We can't be more difficult than we already are. Because sometimes as people, we make things harder than it is. You know what I mean? But when we stay in alignment with the Lord, um, things go a lot smoother and better. I'll just tell you that. I don't know how people can live a life without the Lord. I, I need the Lord more than ever, and you do too. Yes, yes, y'all. And, you know, you cannot serve two masters, people. Make up your mind. Stop being lukewarm. Stop trying to please everybody. Please the Heavenly Father with your faith and your works and what you do secretly, okay? Treasures in heaven, man. Store up the treasures in heaven, people, okay? As far as fasting go, fasting is something that we all need to do from time to time. I, including myself, I need to fast more often. I need to work on that and do work on that area of my life, all right? And the Lord's Prayer is a very powerful prayer. So it's always important to say that as soon as you wake up and as soon as you go to bed too. And even all throughout the day, keep that in your mind. You know, and you know, just give it to the needy, man. Give it to the poor. Give it to the less fortunate. It's very important that we constantly look out for people, okay? God blessed you with what you have. You bless others with what God blessed you with, amen? So that was the whole wrap-up of the book of Matthew chapter 6 reading, all right? Now we will go into the book of Matthew chapter 7, all right? The book of Matthew chapter 7, here we go. Judging others, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? Mm. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? When all the time there's a plank in your own eye, you hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Mm -mm -mm. Do not give to dogs what is sacred, holy. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and then turn and tear you to pieces. Mm. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock and the door be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks the door will be open. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then through you are evil, if you then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good 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 gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. The narrow and wide gates. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. A tree and its fruit. 
Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, the Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. Did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Mm -mm -mm. Ain't that something? The wise and foolish builders. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall. Because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Yes, yes, y'all. That is the book of Matthew chapter 7 reading right there. You know, the more you just read the gospel, the more you just listen to it, the more you take it in. It's just like, wow, man, it just like gets better and better. Like the word is just pure nourishment, spiritual nourishment, man. That gospel, it really does something to the temple. You know, it really just does something to your body, man, your mind, heart and soul. It's important that we digest the gospel, man, and we really take the gospel and just really apply it to our lives. Amen. So in Matthew chapter seven, discussed about judging others, not being a hypocrite, not having a one a one street way of approaching things or evaluating people, um, making sure that we check ourselves and look in that mirror. You know, Jesus was all about reflection and self-evaluation before we evaluate others. You know, and sometimes as people, we could be very petty, uh, petty and immature and nitpicky about others, but we're not even that critical of our own selves and our own lives. So Jesus is telling us to make sure we check ourselves before we check others. Amen. Ask, seek, and knock. So Jesus was just saying, you know, ask and be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. So we got to be mindful of what are we asking, seeking, and knocking on, right? Make sure that everything that we're asking, seeking, and knocking on is the will of God and is centered around the kingdom of heaven and is centered around pleasing the Father. Let everything that we ask, seek, and knock on be all about the glory of God and to please him. Let it not be just solely on our own selfish ambitions or our own lust and flesh, you know? Because we because we tend to do that too much at times, right? And the narrow, wide gates, this path of following Jesus is a very narrow path, man. It's a very narrow path, and only a few will travel on it. And it's more prevalent than ever. You see the path that people are on today. There are only a few people on this narrow path, amen? And it's very beautiful and refreshing to meet another person on that narrow path. People out here living lawless, reckless, wild, loose, perilous times when, you know, the days of knowing. It's the end times, the last day, so people are just no discipline, no self-control, no manners, no integrity, no respect, no nothing, you know? That's the broad gate. That's the broad path everyone's on. But this path that Jesus laid out for us is a narrow path. The gospel, the word, it's, you know, got to, you know, got to travel upon it accordingly, amen, according to the word. And a tree and its fruits, you know, Jesus discussed about, you know, a tree by its fruits, man. And, you know, sometimes people don't have the best discernment and they always get deceived and tricked and misled by certain gestures of how people go about things. But Jesus is saying, hey, man, the fruit a person bears, tell you, the, the type of fruit a person bears will tell you everything about them. So let us pray to God for more sharper discernment as we're dealing with people on a daily basis in these environments that we're in. And let's make sure that we're bearing good fruit. All right. Let's make sure that and the wise, foolish builders, you know. Always keep your foundation based around the kingdom of heaven, around the Lord, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Everything you do, base it around that. Don't base things around your pride or trying to prove a point or vain things. You know, that's how people fall all the time through pride and vanity and selfish ambition. When we base everything in our lives around the Lord, there's no failure in that. Everything is prosperity and prevailing and overcoming and conquering and just flourishing. Amen. God wants his people to flourish. 
the gospel and the word helps us flourish, not just on a material aspect, just spiritually, you know, just plentiful, bountiful, abundant lifestyle. Amen. So that wraps up the book of Matthew chapter seven reading. OK, now we will go to the book of Matthew chapter eight. All right. The book of Matthew chapter eight. Here we go. All right, y'all. So no matter of fact, we'll just leave it at Matthew chapter six or seven today. We'll continue eight on the next episode. Uh, we just I just want to chop it down just to six or seven. I think those are some chapters I really want to stress and go through and just leave it at that. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the Bible, you can't just skim through it and all that. You have to read it like layer by layer and meditate on the word. So I just want y'all to meditate on a book of Matthew and meditate on the book of Matthew chapter seven as well. You know, chapter six or seven, just meditate through those things. Um, and reflect yourselves. Make sure you're actually going about it the way that Christ went about it. Amen. And let us be obedient and faithful as we go about the gospel in these last days. All right. So what I love to do is I close out, give all the glory, praise and honor to the most high God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And praise is only begotten son who died for our sins. Amen. All right, y'all. So here we go. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. He is the hope for humanity. He is the Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam. The advocate, the almighty, true, living God, the Alpha and Omega. Amen. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atonement sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning and creation of God. Yes, yes. The beginning of the creation of God. The beloved son, the blessed and only potent, the blessed and only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation. The chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the constellation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, wonderful counselor, the creator, the day spring, the deliverer, the desire of the nations, the door, the elect of God, Emmanuel, the eternal life, the everlasting father, the faith of true witness, faithful and true, the faithful witness, the first and the last, the first begotten, the firstborn from the dead, firstborn of all creation, the forerunner, the gate, the glory of the Lord, God, the good shepherd, the great high priest, the great shepherd, the head of the church. The heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the I am that I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge, king eternal, the king of Israel. He is the king of kings. Hosanna, Hosanna. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. Amen. Hallelujah, the King of Saints, the King of the Ages, King of the Jews, the King, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the Lawgiver, the Leader and Commander, the Life, the Light of the World, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah, the Living One, the Living Stone, the Lord, the Lord is my rock, the Lord is my banner, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my shield, the Lord is my fortress, the Lord is my deliverer, the Lord is my salvation, the Lord is my deliverer, the Lord is my high tower, yes, yes, y'all, the Lord is my branch, the Lord is my redeemer, yes, yes, y'all, the Lord our righteousness, the Lord, our God, is one. Yes, yes, the Lord, Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Be Yahweh, 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 Yeshua, Hamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim, the consuming fire, Ahaya, Yeshaya, Yehosha, Yahusha. Yes, yes, Yah. He is the Father of lights, the Father of mercies, the Father of the fatherless, the Father of the widows. He is the, con He definitely is a consuming fire, Yah. He definitely is. He is the God of heaven and earth. His son sits at the right hand of him. The government rests on his shoulders. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. With him, all things are possible to those who believe. Yes, yes, y'all. Can't please him without faith, y'all. You have to have that faith to please the Father. Yes, yes, y'all. He is too awesome. He is too amazing. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit is excellent. He is the Lord of all, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the great physician can heal all things, the carpenter can fix all things, amen. Yes, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the message of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection of life, the resurrector. He is the life. He is the revelation. He is the revelator. He is the righteous branch, the righteous one, the radiant one, the perfect example, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the rule of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh. The son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, the son of the blessed, the son of the most high God, 
the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. Yes, he is the way. Amen. He is the way, truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yeshua HaMashiach, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of Yeshua, the word of Yehosha. The word of Yahusha, the word of Ahia Shia, the word of the consuming fire. Yes, yes, the word of the Father of Lights. Amen. We touch and agree, y'all. We serve an awesome creator. And his son is amazing for die for our sins. He definitely is the word. Yes, yes, y'all. Boast in the Lord, boast in him. Uh, yes, tell people how amazing he is. Yes, yes, y'all. Declare his name, exalt his name, lift his name on high, y'all. Yes, yes. Boast in him. His son is just too amazing, isn't he? The seed of Abraham, promise. He is the seed of Adam, humanity. Seed of David, kingship. Seed of God, deity. Seed of Jacob, nationality. Seed of Judah, tribe. Seed of Shem, race. Seed of woman, prophecy. Seed. Yes, yes. He is all of that and more beyond it. Amen. Yes, y'all. In the authority and the power and the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed, renewed, restored, redeemed, forgiven, embraced, loved, cherished. New mind, new heart, new soul, new life, new hands to prosper. New footsteps, new path, new life, new scenery, new journey, new steps, new destinations. Amen. Yes, yes, we touch and agree. New healing, new new restoration, new discernment, new wisdom, new knowledge, all of that in, in the Lord. Amen. Ask the Lord for wisdom and he will give it freely. Yes, yes, y'all. He will give it. A, we serve an abundant creator. He gives abundance in things. Amen. So there you have it, all right? That's the message for today. Just the book of Matthew chapter 6 and the book of Matthew chapter 7. Read it, all right? Reflect and meditate on those words and let us apply that to our own personal lives. Amen. I pray to God that whoever's listening to this message, I pray that you repent and get baptized, touch your life for the most high. I pray that you repent. I just pray that things turn around for you. Get those miracles, wonders, and signs that break through the healing, the deliverance, all of that and, and above. Amen. And much more. All right, y'all. So there you have it, all right? And had a really, I had a very eventful day today, you know what I mean? And I'm going through a lot right now, you know what I'm saying? So um feel a little under the weather, you know what I'm saying? A little sick, but it's all good. I'll praise the Lord. All right, and I will be healed and restored and rejuvenated and rested and get back to it, all right? So just one of those days, you feel me? Prayers for health for anybody else out there who's going through any health, anybody who's dealing with fatigue or, uh, you know, the body of Christ, you know, the health is, is everything, isn't it? And a lot of people's health, the, the body, um, a lot of that's being tested right now, amen? So let us put our trust and faith in the Lord and know that he, we are healed by his stripes and he will have us feeling better than ever, amen? So just want to keep this message kind of short and brief because uh, I definitely need some rest. I definitely need to, you know, get a sweet sleep in Jesus' name because uh, today was just a lot today, all right? So... What I love to do as I close out is give y'all this priestly blessing on the way out, all right? So here we go. All right, all right. The priestly blessing. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. We touch and agree, y'all. Shalom. So there you have it, y'all. Y'all stay strong and stay rested as well, all right? I'm Jarvis Case. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace. <laughs>